Thank you for your kindness. It really moved us. <laughs> just to give love and gratitude just for life. The more we trust, the more things are going to fall into place. And it's wonderful. Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Love you. I love you. I'm just tossing and turning in bed. The pain was so bad. Oh, yeah, he was wincing. He couldn't even speak on the phone. First thing in the morning, I took my blood pressure. It was like 200 over 100. Annie is like, honey, you're having a heart attack. you got to go to the hospital. So I came over here, went through the emergency room. First, they figured out that I wasn't having a heart attack. Well, they kept looking because of the pain. They did a CAT scan and immediately came back and said, you have a huge tumor in your spine at T1 up in the back of my spine that's pressing on your spinal cord. That's where the pain is coming from. And it's like, okay, well, what do we do next? We have to fix that. The first evening for me, I was a mess when I learned that over the phone. And then after a few hours, Dan and I talked and we came to a place of profound peace. We went in a deep, peaceful sleep, and it just felt like this is for us Mm -hmm. and not happening to us. When I was on the layover in Atlanta, uh, Dan calls me. The reception is awful. The doctor is in the room trying to say Dan is going into surgery tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, it was a little bit of a of a OMG, WTF kind of moment. Mm. And um, so I got here Sunday night and they came early in the morning and it was prep for surgery. Luckily, so luckily, uh, it didn't penetrate his spinal cord. They had to remove a bunch of T1 because the tumor had taken away a lot of the bone and they scraped two other vertebras above and below. They scraped some ribs that also had some tumor on it. And, uh... So the surgery was an incredible success. It is major and Dan's body is taking um, a beating. <laughs> Yeah, had to cut through a lot of muscle. Yeah. All that muscle I built up over the years doing pull-ups. Yeah, they had to cut through all of that muscle to get to my spine. Yeah. Yeah. So. (laughs) You're amazing too. Don't turn your neck. Oh, sorry. (laughs) He's just a strong, strong man. So like last time when he had cancer, he just blows the mind of everybody that comes in, the nurses and the doctors of... Here he is, Miracle Man, not even 24 hours after major spinal surgery. So then we moved to Sedona for a little while. This room has become the gathering place where people say, oh, you know, friend nurses, you've got to go to this room. You just have to meet these guys. And people come and talk about the healing power of love. And Talk, talk, talk. Well, somebody knocks <laughs> on the door. Dan always says, Come on and join the party. <laughs> you silly man. I love you. Okay, yeah. I've had a few five, ten minutes here and there when the doctors show me the images or tell me the kind of surgery he's going to have where I kind of bawled a little bit, but <laughs> it's temporary. It's my way of processing deep emotions. Like I said, we're making lists of the miracles that are occurring. We actually sleep, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, I am, I am uh, lucky enough that they allow me to sleep here. It's in a little reclining chair. It's not super comfortable, but we can put it at the same height as Dan's bed. So we can still hold hands and touch feet and all that. And in this time of COVID, to be able to be here and still be with Dan through this is um, another miracle that doesn't go unnoticed because well, we know it's not been the experience of a lot of people going through medical issues right now and so so now you guys know i'm missing a big chunk of my spine i got some new hardware we still have cancer to deal with yeah. we'll find out more about that here in the coming days yeah it was yeah. There were a lot of doctors meeting at the end of the day yesterday oncology and 
all that fun stuff. There's a lot of information to take in. It's a lot to process. But we're still good. It's just, you know, goes like this, like this, like this, like this. Talk about the series of, of miracles that led because to this. This project that he was brought to two weeks ago, so enthusiastic, is falling apart. And it's just like life arranged all the circumstances for Dan to be here next to this hospital with the acute symptoms that he had and to be taken over by this genius team of neurosurgeons that took the surgery in the nick of time. All the way around. All the way around. To all yeah. kinds of miracles. So all kinds of miracles. It's miracle. all good. So we think maybe resilience comes from finding joy regardless mm -hmm. of what's happening. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's what resilience is. So we're gonna keep being resilient because we love joy. Mm -hmm. We definitely prefer joy. Yeah. Bye. Bye, folks. Mm. And Dan is no longer a cable lineman. Yeah, the doctor and said that. He's like, no, you can't do that work anymore. So, and it's a long road ahead. The neurosurgeons are saying there is no way he can fly for like, it's like at least six weeks. So we don't know how it's going to work with the insurance. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Dan's home. We did it. We did it. 3,000 miles <sighs> to get home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll start but figuring out what's next. <sighs> we're going to do this healing. thrive we're gonna learn we're gonna share and just take a day at a time and be grateful and we are like immensely grateful and yeah. it's the state that we're in yeah. constantly yeah. sorry to folks rest. i gotta go yeah. i need to take okay. a nap okay okay Bye, everybody. love you everybody love you see ya Bye. wait till you see the pictures of the inside titanium he is titanium <laughs> Even more interesting than this, these are just the nuts and bolts. <laughs> oh, nuts and bolts. Oh. I'm so oh. funny. Everybody groan. Oh. oh. <laughs>